There will be classes here tomorrow at Benjamin Tasker Middle School and at all Prince George's County and Montgomery County schools, but it won't be easy for many parents to send their kids back to class. Police cars coming down Cambria in this direction. The other car in this direction, they hit here in the middle of the intersection. The black car spins around a couple of times right into this corner where little Samaj was standing. No matter how nice your house, if you don't have air conditioning, it can be pretty darn uncomfortable, uncom especially on a day like today the air conditioning of this house is broken take a look at the thermostat it measures about 85 degrees well rod marianne if you look behind me you can see why this federal disaster aid is really needed and that is just the area we lit now if i walk over here you can see destruction all down the block this appears like it was a barber shop what you've been telling us you're going to do that's kind of just shocked us that's all Oh, really? Well, I like to shock you guys, especially on a Sunday morning. If I have to get up this early, I'm going to shock you. Um, well, you know, of course, the, the fair, we all go on the rides and eat the funnel cakes, but the fair is about a lot more than just the, the food and the fun. A 14-year-old girl was killed last night trying to cross this section right here, just a few feet from where I'm standing, of the BW Parkway. When someone from the condominium complex next door to the home called police to report someone rummaging through the dumpster. When police arrived, they found what they thought was a 10-year-old child inside looking for food. And until the repairmen can get here, this is the coolest place in this house, out in the backyard in the pool. You're looking at the Collingswood home state officials describe as a house of slow torture. The adults that live there now behind bars. 50-year-old Raymond Jackson and his 48-year-old wife Vanessa arrested Friday for attempting to starve to death their four adoptive boys. It, it boggles the mind in terms of how you can try to rationalize how any individual parent could ever come to the point where they can neglect a young child to this extent. 19 year old Bruce, only four feet tall and weighed just 43 pounds, a healthy weight for a five year old child. 14 year old KJ, 40 pounds. 10 year old TJ, 28 pounds. And nine year old MJ weighed just 23 pounds. Prosecutors say the boys fed only uncooked pancake batter and oatmeal. But we've uh, found evidence, and the boys have also told us that they were eating portions of the wall and the insulation behind it. Neighbors thought the kids might be sick, didn't think much of it. Until one day when someone from the condominium complex next door to the home called police to report someone rummaging through the dumpster. When police arrived, they found what they thought was a 10-year-old child inside looking for food. That 10-year-old turned out to be 19-year-old Bruce. Police say he was so severely malnourished, his teeth were rotted, and he had difficulty speaking. Worst of all, a state worker from the Division of Youth and Family Services made monthly visits to the home. There is each either serious incompetence, indifference, or negligence associated with this case. Rebecca Mesa, CBS3 Eyewitness News. The first thing he said was, Mommy, please help me. What could I do? Yolanda Cooper waits out these next 24 hours, hoping, praying her son is okay. Seven-year-old Samaj Cooper hit Sunday night around 745 as he stood with his bike here on the corner of Six and Cambria. And around the corner, and I found my baby in a puddle of blood. While doctors treat his lacerated liver, fractured pelvis, back, and head injuries, police investigate the accident. It involved two cars, a police cruiser, and this black Mazda. Uh, preliminarily, we have the call as a... Uh, um, a man with a gun, an uh, officer in foot pursuit. An officer was in foot pursuit. And that's what they were responding to. Police cars coming down Cambria in this direction. The other car in this direction, they hit here in the middle of the intersection. The black car spins around a couple of times right into this corner where little Samaj was standing. Neighbors call the intersection extremely dangerous. There's an accident, you know. A lot of times they, they hit the they hit the wall. And I just don't I just don't trust this corner at all. A feeling shared by Yolanda Cooper. She wants only to see her son outside playing basketball with his big brothers again. In North Philadelphia, Rebecca Mesa, CBS3 Eyewitness News. Well, Jeff, leaders of different faiths come together tonight in Rockville with a very special request. They asked the entire nation to pray from sundown Friday to sundown Sunday for an end to the killings. I'd like to call on people throughout our nation to join us in prayer for an end to these senseless killings.
senseless killings that many fear claim nine, possibly ten lives since October 2nd. Now Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, Bishop Edwin May, and spiritual leaders from all faiths gather in Rockville to lead the community in its time of need. The most important thing we have in life is each other. We need prayer. We need the thoughts and the prayers of everyone throughout this region so that we can get through these horrible times together. This special interfaith service addresses the needs and fears of families who feel robbed of their sense of security, something especially strong among children and teens. 9-11 was one day, but this has been three weeks of terror, and now he's going after school children. It's almost worse than September 11th because it's just three weeks of terror instead of one day. And once again, that special period of prayer, sundown Friday to sundown Sunday, that's when they say they need your prayers for an end to the killings. Reporting live from Montgomery County Police Headquarters in Rockville, Rebecca Mesa, WBAL 11 News. Good evening, Yuki. Let's face it, no matter how nice your house, if you don't have air conditioning, it can be pretty darn uncomfortable, uncom especially on a day like today. The air conditioning in this house is broken. Take a look at the thermostat. It measures about 85 degrees, but this homeowner will have to take a number if they want to get it repaired. This is the first of many calls Fred Finke makes today. He arrives ready, armed with tools, parts, and refrigerant. This homeowner wants the air back on. My son finally said, enough is enough. We need some cool air here. He has a thermometer in his bedroom. It was 93 degrees inside the house. Company owner Carmen Batavio says searing temperatures are not only frying yeah, systems, but at close to 100 calls a day, frying employees and repairmen as well. He says people are more tolerant of the cold, not as tolerant of heat. You'll come out and one of the techs will say, well, you need a part, I have to run to the supply house. And the people say, well, you make sure you leave your tools here so we know you're coming back. Everything's set up and running. This homeowner got lucky. She only needs a new control board. At a cost of about $250, it's a lot cheaper than having to replace her 23-year-old system, a system that has to work twice as hard in this kind of heat. And until the repairmen can get here, this is the coolest place in this house, out in the backyard in the pool. Reporting live from Downingtown, Rebecca Mesa, CBS 3 Eyewitness News.